Hey everybody and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Today I am standing at the Lake Havasu Rock Shop. This is the lapidary shop, part of the mineral club here at Lake Havasu, and it is open to the members to come and use for a fee per hour on each one of the machines. I am a director of the club, which I am very honored to do so. I get to volunteer and do all kinds of things for the club, including help out with the new coming up mineral show. This is going to be, what is it, the 54th annual mineral show here in Havasu. It's actually huge for what it is. It's located at the Aquatic Center. I will be posting more of this information on my Facebook as well as YouTube so that you guys can see the flyer, see how you can get involved and when it is, the times, dates, all that kind of stuff. It's an awesome thing to go and see. I've done a couple videos on my YouTube channel about it if you guys want to check it out in advance to see exactly what you would be getting into. Today we are here to take a piece of horn coral that I found on an awesome adventure when I was in Utah from just a regular piece of horn coral like this one into a beautiful cab like this one. What we're doing is we're going to window the top of it at, from start to finish. And this material is extremely, extremely hard. So it's gonna take us a little bit of time to actually do that perfect window and get that beautiful gloss that we're looking for. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure and let's go see what we polish up. Before we even start polishing this, we have to have the right safety equipment. I like to have earmuffs just because the machines are loud and you only get one set of eardrums. So I like to put these on also, it can kind of keep me in my own little world or whatever. So I use these. Also, it's mandatory that we have safety glasses on just because there is things that fly around. You do get little chips of whatever that can fly out. Sometimes I'll end up doing this and I'll forget and put them back on. Also, some form of face covering. A lot of it is silicate that is flying off of these wheels. Even though we're using water, it can still be in the air. I like to use just a silk scarf because it doesn't mess with my face because I have sensitive skin. But you can use any type of mask in order to keep that suppressed. Um, but before we start this, we're going to prep it and we're going to prep it by washing it. When you bring in any rock to a mineral shop or a lapidary shop especially, you don't want to contaminate the wheels. So you wash it with soap and water before you start. This just gets rid of any particles that could possibly transfer to the wheel and make it funky, that kind of a thing. After that, we're ready to go. Okay, we're also putting an apron on because water flies around and you need to be protected. This is the cabbing machine we're using today. It's the eight inch easy cab. This is, you know, just a very simplistic version of something like a Cab King or like a Diamond Tech or, or something that's a little bit more expensive. I think these run about $2,500. And so this is like, they've got a lot of them here. Uh, you know, there's a bunch that people can sit down and use, but we are using this today. And we're, we're starting out with 80. We're going all the way this direction to 3,000 and then we're going to come over here, oops, and we're gonna go to 8,000. And then, what is that one, 40? 14,000, I can read, I can read. And then we're gonna come over here to 50,000. And from already doing one of these earlier, I know that 50,000 is as high up as I wanna go, just because I got the most beautiful glossy shine on the pieces that I had done already so that I could make sure to do this previously. <laughs> This machine has two speeds. We have a slow and a high speed. And to kind of get rid of some of these rough edges, I'm gonna start it out on that fast speed to start and wear this down. Now that I'm as safe as I can be, I pull out the water tube and I make sure that the wheel is completely wet. And here is our piece that we will start out with. You can see that it has an elevated ridge right on the top of this piece, as well as sharp edges. We're going to try to knock down those edges as well as that ridge to get a beautiful rounded window on the top of this coral. We're not going to be polishing the back. That's going to stay completely natural. We're just going to window the top. Turn it on to high speed and here we go. The material is made, coral has been replaced by basically microcrystal and quartz. Oh my gosh, they look like Cousin It. Extremely, extremely hard material. Starting out with a general shape. 
And something you'll do quite often while calving is look at the top of the mineral and feel how smooth it is. I'm trying to take off this ridge right here. So we're trying to take that off and smooth it around. You want to look at the mineral often and feel how smooth it is quite often in order to see if you're making the progress you want. You're trying to get rid of any divots and create a beautiful, even, round surface. You also need to remember to keep the wheel wet at all times to get a perfect surface on your mineral without damaging the wheel. Here we are after the 80 grit. And you can see it just has water on it right now. We're gonna dry it off so that you can see exactly what it looks like. And that area still has water, but you can see like it's all dulled up, right? It's all funky right now, it's crappy, and it's eventually, it'll start to get smoother, but that's what it looks like after taking it through the 80 grit. Steve just made an excellent point that I need to talk about. This is your shaping wheel. So your 80 grit is going to be the one that you spend, uh, you know, a little bit of time on to make sure that you get the right shape, but you don't want to take off too much material. And then this 220 wheel is going to take off all of the scratches and the facets and the kind of funky rough stuff that the 80 grit knocked down for you but still left rough. And so this is actually going to still give you some pretty big lines in it. And the 280 wheel is where you're going to really spend a lot of time on these two wheels, this one and this one. And in between each one, we dunk off our rock, we wash it, we make sure that there is no sediment or whatever that's left over from the 80. We're going to jump into this knock off what the 80 didn't get off what we wanted to right away and keep shaping it. Like I said, we're going to spend a lot of time on the 220 and the 280. But once you get really good at calving something and your ear starts to become attuned to what you're doing, you actually hear a huge difference once you move the stone from wheel to wheel and you can actually start to hear when the stone becomes smooth enough in order to move to the next wheel. Again, we are checking and feeling the stone the entire time we're working on it. It makes a big difference to see if you've missed anything. And here's where we're at after the 220. That nice, even looking haze. Now it has that little divot right there and a little tiny crack and those things may never come out and I could try to follow them in and make them disappear and it could just wear out the entire stone. And since horn coral is extremely rare, uh, at least the Riley's Kang and horn coral, we're gonna leave it as it is and keep going. I just wanted to say if you're loving this content and you're liking this video today, please subscribe. Hit the like button, hit the notifications, share this video with your friends. Literally, it is the number one way to support your favorite creator. So thank you guys so much, I appreciate you. And now moving on to the 280. I spent an extreme amount of time on this one. I wanted to really make sure that all of the scratches I made from the 80 and the 220 were completely gone before moving on to the polishing wheels. Now just a quick inspection, just to make sure I haven't missed any parts and it feels great, so it's time to move on. This is after the 280. Nice, smooth, and we're getting rid of that I think that one divot is gone. Um, maybe it's filled in, but regardless, this is looking amazing. So we're gonna move on to the polishing stage. Again, essentially what we've done is we shaped it. We got rid of those bigger scratches from shaping it. And then we just came off of this wheel, which, you know, if you touch each one of these, it's not bad. If you're touching these while it's running, you could easily get like burned, like a, like a a really bad sandpaper burn and it can it can really rip off uh, some skin especially on the edges of the blades so you have to be super careful because these are kind of squishy these two are like you know solid real solid uh, the rest of them that we'll be using is are really squishy too but yeah it, basically you're just taking off scratches of each one and then polishing is essentially taking off the other scratches right down to where it looks like glass but this is what it looks like right now it actually looks pretty good so we're going into the next stage. For anybody that is curious why I have the sponge underneath of the wheel, it's simply just to brace my hand and to make it comfortable. It's also to protect the stone in case you drop it. That way it doesn't bounce off of the metal, it actually lands on the sponge and can save some more delicate stones. All right, here's what this is looking like so far. Real nice and smooth after coming off of the 600 and we're about to go into the 1200 now. 
And you can see it's just nice and glossy. That door open was great. It gives like really good light, actually. But look at that. Like it's starting to get a like a very matte gloss on it right now. It's gonna look so good. This is the shine that we've gotten now right after the 1200. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is stunning. Like it's just, it's like glass, right? It's glowing. When we take this outside eventually after we're finished, it's really gonna look spectacular. All right, now we're moving on to the 3000. This is what we're looking like after the 3000. Look at that. Look at that. It is like glass. All right, we're moving on. Look at that after the 8000. And it's like a mirror face. It's insane. Insanely crazy. That is gorgeous so far. I'm going to just touch it onto the 14,000 here, and then I think it's done. Look at that, guys. Look how shiny that is. It just reflects the sun just beautifully. Very difficult actually to see how amazing it looks because it looks 3D inside. Oh my gosh. But you can't really see it because the light's reflecting off of it so much. Here's our mineral in the raw. And then after the 80 grit, after the 220, after the 280 grit, after the 600, after the 1200, after the 3000, after the 6000, and then after the 14000. And here are the ones that I polished previously. I hope you enjoyed learning how to polish up Riley's Canyon Horn Coral. This was an amazing adventure for me to go find these rocks and then to be able to polish them up at my local lapidary shop has just been awesome. I highly advise you to go join a rock club if you're into this kind of thing. So thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure and I'll see you on the next one. These will be my outtakes for the whole thing. It's like... <laughs>